everyone this is Ross and today we're going to do another taste test video nine different varieties of figs again today um, it's just that time of the year we're getting many many different figs ripening kind of at the same time and it's really nice because I may not eat all these varieties today um, you know I'll taste all of them but I'll save the other halves of the figs for tomorrow put them in the fridge and they taste even better I think in the fridge um, I don't know what that is, maybe it's some kind of temperature thing, but before we get into the actual taste test video, uh, I want to tell you guys what's been going on in the yard because it's kind of important to understand the conditions here before I tell you the ratings of these figs. So we've had a lot of rain that came in yesterday. It was about maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7 inches of rain. It rained all day. Today has been very dreary. You know, the sun's not really out. It's very cloudy. Um, it's gonna be like this for really about a week. It's kind of upsetting because Before this had happened when I had done the first nine variety of taste test video for you guys Which I published uh, this past Saturday The weather was perfect for figs. We had no rain for a whole week. We had temperatures in the 90s for a whole week uh, Things were great, but now the rain has come in and actually ruined a couple figs uh, you can see right in here that this is petite all beak and a lot of this is getting eaten by slugs or wasps or I'm not really sure and the rain has kind of really not helped this process out because once you have a fig like this I'm gonna pick a couple but once you have a fig that's been bitten into by something and the flesh is exposed if the rain and the water gets in there it really ruins the uh, the sugar content of that fig almost instantaneously so I'm gonna pick a few more of these petite all beaks and then we're gonna do uh, just the same style of what we did last time uh, of nine different varieties guys we have them all laid out over here almost ready to go for you so let me get on that now okay everyone so here we have the figs that we're gonna be trying today we have LSU champagne a fig bred by Louisiana State University. We have Mary Lane Seedless, Smith, one to watch out for, Encanto, a seedling from Encanto Farms, uh, Dal Oso, this is the Belfiore version in Italy. Uh, this is Petite Albic. We have Italian 258, another one to really, really watch out for, and the two underdogs. Dr. Gawadi and White Triana. So let's cut them open. All right, everyone. So this is what the figs look like split open, and you can see so far that um, Daloso really is a big surprise for me. I knew this was going to be a tasty fig. It seems quite early. Definitely holding up to the rain quite well just by looking at it. And then Smith also is really standing out for me today. What's weird is that Smith today. Um, versus two days ago when I picked my first Smith of the season two days ago we had perfect weather today we don't so uh, the fact that Smith looks better with worse weather is quite incredible and it's uh, probably why a lot of people in drier climates like Arizona or California are not as big of a fan of this fig it looks insanely good today Italian 258 also looks very very good this is a really high quality fig right now in terms of fruit quality same thing with Smith the fruit quality on those two are very high right now we also have a uh, LSU champagne that looks really um, really really filled with honey so beautiful beautiful figs I want to talk to you all about uh, my rating system so uh, ratings are based on taste alone um, usually I'll talk about the individual characteristics of each variety in terms of their production or hardiness or earliness, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but my ratings are only based, based on taste. A nine is something that can compete with a fig ripened in California. A 10, I rarely give. I've only given that out to a uh, California ripened Black Madeira and Unknown Pastelieri. Those figs blew me out of the water way better than anything I can ever ripen here. If something were to reach a 10, I'd be quite surprised. And an 8 is a step below that, but an 8 is a keeper for me. A 6 is a decent Brava. 
Uh, so Brava crop usually isn't as good as the main crop. Um, anything below a five, a five or below is just a fig I really didn't enjoy. So I'm sure we're gonna have actually one of them today. We're gonna probably run into a five or something below that. Um, and we'll talk about that and the reasons why. So let's get into it now. All right, so first up guys is LSU Champagne. This fig was bred by Louisiana State University. Um, it's not really the largest fig because it has Celeste in its parentage. And um, Louisiana State University did a really, really great job at breeding figs and getting figs that would really do well here in my climate as well as the south, most of the east coast, even the Pacific Northwest. Uh, these, you know, LSU figs don't do as well, you know, in California or Arizona. I think these figs really don't mind the humidity and don't mind the water. It really is an interesting characteristic of these figs. LSU Champagne, by the way, guys, when we were looking at that just now, it's a typical honey fig. It has an amber interior, yellow, yellow or green skin, it gets sugar spots on the outside, and it also has tons of honey in the inside that the fig naturally produces, often leaking through the eye. One of my LSU Champagnes did have honey leaking through the eye. Um, it's just an overall really, really good fig as well. So, um, you know, it's really rain resistant, doesn't split. Uh, it's early, it's productive, it's the best overall honey fig that I have, and it's always been an 8 for me, an 8 out of 10, which is a keeper. So let's try it right now. Typical honey fig, very different from the rest of these varieties. Tastes a lot like a melon, a lot like a fig, has honey, it's really sweet, and even a little bit of brown sugar type uh, taste in there. Mary Lane Seedless is quite similar, and we're going to get to that one right, right now. All right, everyone. Mary Lane Seedless. It doesn't look very ripe. Um, I don't think it's doing nearly as well as LSU Champagne does in the rain, and that's my biggest worry about this variety. Um, you know, I would like to have a, a tastier honey fig than LSU Champagne, but I don't know really how much tastier they can get. For me, a honey fig is always going to be an 8. If there's any honey fig that's higher than an 8, I'd be very surprised. Um, the berry figs, just having a berry flavor to it adds so much more complexity um, than the standard honey fig. It really is uh, just that much more interesting. So Mary Lane Seedless, we'll taste it now. I've had a Mary Lane Seedless that was really, really good two years ago. Um, this year the tree is, the tree is uh, struggling. Last year the tree struggled because we, we overwatered it and water really affects the flavor of these figs, guys. Really good. Even though it's underripe. That is so good actually. It's really weird. Um, it tastes like a marshmallow. <laughs> it literally tastes like a marshmallow. Um, maybe even a little bit of banana in there. Brown sugar, melon. Quite sweet, uh, actually really good. It's nice and refreshing. It's not overly sweet. It's still an eight for me, but I think uh, Maryland see this is a really top tier honey fig. So I'm gonna look for uh, later in the season trying to get the perfect Maryland see this to uh, kind of benchmark this variety off of in future years. All right, next we're gonna do Encanto because uh, I'm very, very, very anxious to try this. Uh, nobody has this fig, it seems like. I got this from Harvey at Figaholics. Nobody seems to have this variety. At least nobody's trying to grow it. I wasn't even sure if it was going to be common because nobody has ripened this outside of... The next fig that I really, really want to try, I've been talking and researching this fig for years. Um, this is a fig that Belfiore Nursery in Italy um, says is the real Dal Oso. This is the real Dal Oso that has been lost. Um, this is the Dal Oso that Galicio describes in his drawings, which is 
very, very rare. We, we, many of us thought it was lost forever. I thought it was lost forever. I'm still not really convinced that this is the real one. But what it does is it produces a mule fig um, fairly consistently in that you basically have two figs in one. And in Galicio's drawings, there was a black fig and a green fig depicted. So, uh, so far I, have, I haven't seen the black and the green fig in one off of this variety, but uh, for other reasons, besides the fact that it could be the Dal Oso, I really wanted to get this fig, being that it's early, it's definitely rain resistant, and it looks very, very tasty, so let's try it. That's a good fig. That's a really good variety something weird in there and that's the first fig I've eaten off that tree that's really good uh, it's an 8 for me but it's definitely one of the top tier 8's I've had that's actually really good so I'm excited to try more from that that tree guys I actually have two of them and I put four air layers on the Daloso tree this year because uh, I was anticipating it to be that good so really happy I get to try it that's awesome all right, guys, no more playing around. Let's eat Smith. And on Smith is actually a drop of honey at the eye. Uh, I did photograph that. Um, you can't really see it right now, but it was there. And you can see in here the fig looks quite jammy. Um, it looks really, really good. So I'm excited to eat this right now. Yeah. Yep. It was like a hint of bubblegum in the beginning. It's such a strange, awesome flavor. It's not really strange, but it's like unique. It's got such a unique, awesome flavor. It's just really good. I mean, it's def it's easily a nine. I mean, you could. I, I'm gonna have. I'm sure at some point, ten of those trees just because they're that good. Man, that was incredible. All right, Petite Albique is up. And uh, Petite Albique, we tried this in the last one two days ago. A lot of them are ripening right now. And they're getting eaten by slugs, so we gotta pick them and uh, try to get these guys to not spoil. What I could do with some of these guys, including Encanto, or maybe if some of the Petite Albiques are a little underripe or Maybe even Mary Lane Seedless. Dr. Gawadi's a little unripe. We're going to probably put these in a dehydrator and get these to intensify the flavor a little bit. And we may actually get something quite tasty um, compared to the fresh form. you know. Uh, but I think Petite Albique is actually pretty decently ripe. It's not perfect, but uh, let's eat it. Two days ago, this was an eight. Uh, let's see if the rain had any effect. About the same guys really interesting berry flavor um, what's weird about this fig is that it will as it ripens the texture the interior texture of the fig will change it will go from jammy honey filled fig to a congealed gel that if you really let it ripen and hang long and kind of semi dry on the tree the interior will become hard like a fruit leather and uh, will actually be a little less pleasant to eat. I really enjoy the more jammier interior. So that's why I picked this one actually earlier. I think the intensity is uh, quite better as you let it go, but it's still really good as it is. So that's an eight for me, Petite Albique. All right, guys, so now we have two very underrated varieties, White Triana and Dr. Gawadi. They're very similar varieties, guys. Um, the leaf pattern, the growth habit, uh, the visual of the fig. The problem here with Dr. Gawadi is that it's just not ripe. Uh, but they're very, very similar types of figs. And when I talk about types of figs, I mean like Petit Albique is a Violette de Bordeaux type, right? It matches other named varieties of, uh, you know, Violette de Bordeaux types that are very closely related. But they have minor differences. 
you can see the biggest difference right now is actually the size, but I think the the reason that Dr. Gawadi is so large is that this is a first year tree. There's very few figs on it. Um, and a lot of the energy that the tree was putting out was being allocated to this fig. It's actually huge. It's pretty close to the size of a tennis ball. Um, I have heard that Dr. Gawadi is better, is one of the best in terms of flavor compared to the other varieties of this type. Another uh, variety that I have that's similar to these is Canadria, Atriano, Laterola is one, Lyndhurst White is one. Um, they're all quite similar in terms of the fig itself. Persian White was very similar to these. And you can see here that the fig will start out like this and then turn to kind of an amber color, as you see here. And then if you let it ripen even longer, which is what you should do with this variety, why it's so misunderstood and why I think it's underrated is it has to hang for a long, long time. It will then turn to pink and then actually a deep pink and be filled and filled with honey. So I want to try Dr. Gawadi. I know it's not ripe, but we're going to take a bite out of this to see what we think of it. Yeah, not much. I can draw from that, guys. Well, here's White Triana, a more ripe version of it. We still have more on the tree that's going to hang for a longer time and get to the ripeness that I really like. So that's exactly what a really well-ripened White Triana or, or a fig of this type will taste like. It gets a really interesting berry flavor when the when the interior turns from amber to pink or to even maybe red, it gets really, really good. If you live in California or Arizona where you have a lot of heat, this fig will almost always be red for you on the inside. It's a weird climate difference here where in my climate where we don't get a lot of sunshine or heat, lots of humidity, a lot of times you'll pick it at this stage here and it just won't be that good and a lot of people don't like them for that reason. But I really, really like White Triana. It's easily an eight, very easily a keeper, a great fig to have. I really love Canadria as well. Um, those are my two favorites of that type so far. All right, guys, just like two days ago when we did this uh, previous taste test, we're gonna save the best for last. Uh, Italian 258 could very well be the best. Um, you can see in here, there is honey at the eye. See that glistening honey, that drop of honey? It's also very jammy in here. And if I open up the fig a little bit, you can maybe see pools of honey in there at the void. It doesn't look like it. But really a special variety, guys. That's uh, I don't know a single person who doesn't like this variety, no matter where they live. Moment of truth here. Hmm. Yeah. This fig's on another level. Um, like Smith, it's got a really interesting berry, lingering berry too, that I can still taste it on my palate. It's really, really good. There's some acidity in here. It's a beautiful, beautiful fig, too. I mean, it's crazy. It's it's quite large. Man. So it holds up to the rain really well. It's productive. I mean, let me just show you guys my tree. It's extremely productive. Um, you know, there's a fig basically on every node, and some of these nodes, you have two figs. And this is on every branch. It grows really well too. It's quite vigorous. This is the fig up here we just picked. Um, I'm air layering this tree. We have roughly, um, I think I have four of these. I have one in the ground, believe it or not, because it's actually quite hardy. Um, we'll know for sure at the end of the summer, but Herman uh, in New Jersey grows this fig in zone seven, which is where I'm at. And he has no problems getting these figs to ripen every year in the ground, which means it's hardy, it's early. 
well, early enough. Um, I'm not going to say it's early, but I would say it's probably more of a mid-season variety and rather than a late variety like most people would probably expect. So overall, an extremely good variety that ripens uh, definitely after Smith. But you got Azores Dark, which is the earliest of my tasty figs. And then you have Smith following up with that. And then you have Italian 258. So the three of them together are my three favorite by far. And really, really perform well here. Uh, anyway, everybody, that was the video, I guess. Thank you so much for tuning into this little taste test. I hope this is helping you guys out in some way. Um, I do like to show off my figs. Uh, it's just so exciting for me. Um, but I do want this to be a tool for you guys so that in the future when you're getting these fig varieties, people tend to go crazy and tend to go after every single name they can grab onto. And it's just not a good idea. Uh, you're going to end up spending a lot of money for really no reason. You could have 10 Smiths, 10 Italian 258s, 10 Malta Blacks, or 10 Azores Dark, and you'll be totally fine. You're really not missing a whole lot. So, anyway guys, that was the video. Take care. Hope you enjoyed this one.